surface area. Here's what we're going to be looking at. We have some surface that's a function of two variables. Let's call it Z. As before, we're going to have some region R in the XY plane. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be mapping that R up onto your surface. So then we'll call this S, and we'll be looking for the area of S. That's the idea. Area of S is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of k equals 1 to n square root of the first partial of z with respect to x squared plus the first partial of z with respect to y squared plus 1 delta a. Now, that's not exactly how your book displays it. Your book displays it in a much more complicated way. Do you want me to write the way your book shows the Riemann sum, or we're satisfied with this? OK, great. If you want to know what the book does, you can look in the book. Here's what we care about, though. So realistically, what we're going to do is we're going to take double integral over that region r of that whole square root. So the first partial of z with respect to x squared, first partial of z with respect to y squared plus 1. And then that delta A turns into a DA. So here's our first example. We are going to find the surface area. Of the part of the surface. z equals x squared plus 2y that lies above the triangular region with vertices at 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Okay, so using that formula that we wrote above, our surface is z equals x squared plus 2y. We're going to have to take the first partial with respect to x and the first partial with respect to y. First partial with respect to x will be 2x. First partial with respect to y will be 2. So then the area of our surface will be the double integral over the region r square root of that 2x squared plus 2 squared plus 1 dA, which will be the double integral of 4x squared add 5 dA over the region R. I don't think your book uses an R. I think they use a D, but it's the same. Okay, we're going to have to write or draw out that region R then to figure out what our bounds are. So it's a triangular region with a vertex at 0, 0, a vertex at 1, 0, and a vertex at 1, 1, which would be this then. Okay. Looking ju just at the region, does it matter if we integrate with respect to x or y first? Just at the region. Okay, looking at our integrand, does it matter? Yes. Can we integrate with respect to x first? No. So we're going to have to integrate with respect to y first. Lower bound for y is 0. Upper bound for y is that line, which is y equals x. x goes from 0 to 1. OK, so integrate with respect to y. You'll end up with a y in front, but then the x will come out. So this is really 0 to 1 of x times the square root of 4x squared plus 5 dx. 
If you think of your u being that 4x squared plus 5, your du would be 8x dx. So if we integrate, we're going to have a, a 1 eighth, since we're missing that 8, 2 thirds, 4x squared plus 5 to the 3 over 2 from 0 to 1. These two fractions multiplied end up being 1 twelfth. If I plug a 1 in, I get 9 to the power 3 over 2, which is 27. If I plug in a 0, I get 5 to the 3 over 2, which is 5 root 5. Okay. Questions on the formula or the process? Okay, we're going to do two more examples just so that you all can see how some different regions look. But this is what the section covers. It's just that idea of the double integral. So two more, and then I'll give you guys some time to work on homework. Okay, example two. We are going to find the surface area. of the portion of z equals x squared plus y squared that is below the plane z equals 9. So I'm going to start with a figure. Z equals x squared plus y squared. Okay, good, thank you, it's a paraboloid. Going all the way up to z equals nine. What is gonna be our region R? So what are we mapping up onto the surface? The circle, which circle? equals 9. Right. So this is our r down here. That x squared plus y squared equals 9. So when we're finding the area of the surface, we're finding all of this, the outside of that paraboloid. OK, so then it's going to be a double integral over that region r. First partial with respect to x will be 2x. First partial with respect to y will be 2y plus 1. So that'll simplify to 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 1. Do we have any suggestions? Polar, yeah. <coughs> So this will be the square root of 4r squared plus 1. And then remember, you're going to have the r, dr d theta. r in this case goes from 0 to 3. Theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And those are based on the circle. OK, do we feel strongly about integrating the rest of this? We do? Oh. You want to go about integrating it? OK, so can I just give us the answer? Ends up being pi over 6 times 37 to the power 3 over 2 minus 1. OK, we got one more example to do. We are going to find the surface area of z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, which is above the region r. r is the rectangle 0, 1 by 0, 4. OK. Probably would be a good idea to draw a figure just so we know what we're looking at. Do we know what this is?
Right, it's the top half of the cylinder. So if you were to move this around a little bit, you get x squared plus y squared equals 4. Because z is positive, though, it's only the top half of the cylinder. So it's something like this. Okay, and then our region R is x is from 0 to 1 and y is from 0 to 4. So this is that region R, which we are then mapping up onto the cylinder. So this is that surface area that we're looking for when you take your region R and map it up onto the cylinder. You guys with me? So that's just geometrically what it looks like. So our surface area then. Bounds are easy in this case. We're already told what the bounds are. X is 0 to 1. Y is 0 to 4. I don't know if it matters either way. Um, OK, so then we have the first partial with respect to x which will be negative x over the square root of 4 minus x squared, all of that squared. Partial with respect to y will be 0, and then we have plus 1. So this then, we have x squared over 4 minus x squared. We're going to find a common denominator so that 1 is 4 minus x squared over 4 minus x squared. So this ends up being then uh, 4, but I'm going to take the square root of that, so 2 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. OK. reason I wanted to do this problem is I don't know if we remember how to integrate this. OK, there are two options. First option is if you remember all of your trig, um, trig integrals. So like Brian said, this is inverse sine. So this will be 2 inverse sine of x over 2. We're evaluating that from 0 to 1, and then we still have to take the integral of 0 to 4 dy. That's option 1. Personally, I don't have all those memorized because they don't come up a whole heck of a lot. Your second option is a trig substitution. Trig substitution is always going to work, and you don't have to memorize all of your um, inverse trig functions. For your trig substitution, call x 2 sine of theta. dx, then, will be 2 cosine of theta d theta. So I'm gonna just going to ignore that 0 to 4 for a minute. So what happens, then, is you get 2 over the square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared of theta times 2 cosine of theta d theta. This is going to be 4 cosine squared of theta, but then you're taking the square root. So it ends up being 2 over 2 cosine of theta times 2 cosine of theta d theta. So those are done. Then you're just integrating 2. But then, of course, you still have that 0 to 4 for the dy. Either way works. Brian? Why did you uh, set x equal to 2 sine theta? Because if you see, you could have done 2 cosine also. It doesn't matter. Does that? Here, you see that what I want it to be is 1 minus something squared. <coughs> Bless you. The 2 is going to match the 4s then. So if you factor out the 4, you'll have 1 minus 
sine squared theta, which I can replace with cosine squared. If you do cosine, it's going to end up being the same. Uh, if you care, it ends up being 4 pi over 3. Okay. This is the idea for surface area. Any questions? Okay.